Hello and welcome back to yet another episode of Mind of Steel. This show is the weekly delve into the wacky, wonderful, zany world of Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist, Mark Steele. Now, sometimes producing episodes of this show takes a great deal of detective work. I have to spend long hours ferreting out information over the interwebs. But sometimes, as with today's episode, the information that inspires the show gets served directly to me, as if on a silver platter. And the silver platter comes in the form of the uh, Twitter sheet of Nullen Biscuit Overlord, who is uh, an exemplary observer of zany conspiracy theorists. And he kindly pointed me to this truly bizarre video on Mark Steele's BitChute account, which is called Troll Catcher General. I highly recommend anybody who is interested in uh, whatever nonsense Mark Steele is peddling this week, we should all subscribe to his BitChute because it's absolutely hilarious. Um, and today's episode is no exception. It is a truly bonkers video of some kind of confrontation between Mark Steele and members of Northumbria Police that took place in his house only this week. So I'm sure you'll be exquisitely curious about what on earth went on when the police decided to visit Mark. And I am about to reveal that. So please sit yourself comfortably and get ready for another few minutes in the company of the Gateshead gunman, Mark Steele. You may or may not know why I'm here. Go on then. Um, there's been an allegation made against yourself, right? Uh -huh. Can't say a great deal about it because I need to interview you about it. Alright. Right? You're not under arrest. I just need you to come in for a voluntary interview. Right. right? Um, it, all I'll say is it's stuff that's been posted online. Oh. All right. It's a truth universally acknowledged that truthers like Mark Steele don't know how to operate cameras. And anything slightly more complex than pointing a camera at his face, well, that's going to fail. Hence this bizarre framing we see here. It's a, a hidden camera, presumably Mark's phone, placed inside one of his cupboards. It, which is strange because, as far as I'm aware, there's nothing actually preventing Mark Steele from recording this interaction with police officers in the house. He, he could have put a, a conspicuously placed camera on a tripod and he would have been well within his rights. But as we've also previously established, Mark Steele doesn't know much about the law, British law or any kind of law, which, which means any kind of pronouncement that Mark makes must be taken with the greatest suspicion as, I'm sure, are these police officers taking his suggestions that Mark doesn't seem to understand what this meeting is about or what these threatening messages might be. Mark is feigning ignorance, but perhaps doing a very bad job of it. Well, is it's anything ringing, ringing a bell or have you got no idea what I'm talking about? Got the idea. Do you post stuff? Online? I was going to say it's quite a few. Do you post stuff on social media and that? Uh -huh. and Telegram and that? Yeah. Right, okay. Right. When are you free? The police officer asked Mark, when is he free? A an interesting question. When is the unemployed man whose entire income comes from online grifting related to uh, anti-vax conspiracy theories, 5G conspiracy theories, and other kinds of flurfy nonsense, the likes of which I, I shall not repeat for fear of losing my YouTube channel. W when is that person free? Well, the, the technically true answer is he is free all the time because he literally has nothing better to do than harass public servants. So the sooner that the uh, Northumbria police get this interview done, the better in my opinion. But it's clear that Mark is not going to make their life easy. He's already feigning ignorance over these potentially, allegedly threatening messages that he's been sending via telegram. And um, yeah, Mark really does send quite a lot of messages over telegram. He sends all kinds of bizarre threats to people who are public servants, such as the, the MP Liz Twist, and uh, people who are not so public, like um, this chap who uh, he, he has some kind of beef with. Uh, th this person disagreed with Mark, and so, 
he started making online threats via Telegram. So it's quite obvious that Mark Steele sends a lot of very threatening Telegram messages. And to this date, he doesn't seem to have suffered any kind of consequences. Will that change? Well, let's keep listening and find out what we can see from this important cupboard-based recording. But I would just say, just don't post anything in like a threatening what? manner. Like what? On anything threatening. Like what? On social media, anything that someone could perceive, perceive as being a threat towards them. Like what? A strange line of questioning, isn't it? Mark Steele seems to be demanding that the uh, police officer lists absolutely every single kind of message that he should be prohibited from sending via telegram. The gist of it being that if the police officer fails to explicitly prohibit it, then it must be allowed. Which, of course, is an entirely bonkers legal theory that has never been shown to hold any kind of water in this country or any other country or indeed any other time or possible futures that uh, sane people can envision. In fact, the only place where this legal theory holds any kind of water at all is in the land of imagination that exists entirely between the left and right ear of Mr. Mark Steele of Dunstan Gardens, Gateshead. And in that imagination, all is possible. In that imagination, Mark Steele believes that he is getting won over these police officers who are uh, presumably sent by evil government forces to uh, destabilise the truth that he is trying to reveal. But unfortunately for Mark, these police officers seem to be very matter-of-fact sorts of people. And uh, the, the gentleman police officer has uh, a duty to lay down the law as simple and as plain as it can be. If somebody's reported something that you've written online, we can't tell you what it is until it's put to you in an interview. They've perceived it as a threat that you've written online. Um, so you've got to be interviewed about that. Um, That's a bit mad. I'm not, I'm not daft enough to make threats online. Mark Steele claims to be not daft enough to make threats online. But as we'll see from the next few interactions with these police officers, he seems to have a very clear idea about some of the people to whom he has issued threats online. So is Mark Steele daft enough to make threats online? Well, I think keenly aware Mind of Steel viewers might disagree with Mark Steele's characterization of his own behavior. I think we are aware of quite a few people that Mark Steele has issued threats to online. So is he daft enough? Hmm. Probably yes. It's not a local MP, is it? No, no, it's, it's not. not. That one. No, it isn't. It's not that one. Boy, no. It? <laughs> no, no, no. I've been up the I was up headquarters no. trying to get him to arrest her because she's a criminal. I'm sure neither Mark Steele nor Northumbria Police have forgotten that only weeks ago Mark Steele made a very long and rambling phone call to Northumbria Police's crime reporting hotline, in which Mark Steele threatened to take justice into his own hands, literally by kidnapping Liz Twist MP, the local MP for his constituency. Now, by my reckoning, the last time a British MP was kidnapped was in 1979. That was a Conservative MP who was captured by the IRA and eventually killed by them. So this would be a truly remarkable crime, a crime that has not taken place since the, the very worst days of the Troubles, which might hint at some trouble ahead for Mark Steele. But um, no, apparently, according to these police officers, it's not Liz Twist MP who's reported this crime, even though, in my opinion, she would be well within her rights to do so. Is it a Brigade 77 operative? No. What's Brigade 77? I don't know what that is. That a part of the UK military operators? I don't think so. Try to at this completely bonkers guessing game that Mark seems to be playing wasn't any more successful than the first one. I suppose at least uh, that Mark's first guess had a ring of plausibility to it because he was issuing harassing threats about Liz Twist MP, but presumably she has bigger fish to fry. This second guess, uh, Brigade 77, hints at Mark's completely bonkers pathology. As we've also previously established, Mark Steele believes that the reason why he has been 
utterly unsuccessful at whatever life goal he has set himself is because arrayed against him are a powerful range of government-backed forces, one of which being Brigade 77. Who are they, you might be wondering? Well, the 77th Brigade of the British Army are a real thing. They are British military intelligence. But I'm fairly sure that Mark Steele is not a significant threat, at least not on the kind of national level that a military brigade would be dealing with. Mark, you can come back when you've managed to um, obtain a, your, your own personal army and you're in danger of uh, taking over some kind of territory that the British Army are interested in. And, and by the way, I don't count uh, Lee Garrett and a modern day jester as, as enough of an army to, to interest the Brigade 77. But uh, if you were able to, to marshal some kind of uh, elite fighting force, I'm sure they would take your threats a little bit more seriously. Until then, Mark, you just have to deal with these two police officers who want to interview you. And I, I think that should be taken very seriously. Unfortunately, something that Mark Steele seems to be incapable of doing, because as you'll see, he launches in on a, a tirade of conspiracy nonsense, the likes of which are bound to send even the most dedicated police officer to fast asleep. Well, you know about, Pro do you know it was Project Fear? You know the whole COVID-19 lockdown thing? Mm -hmm. Project Fear. Uh, yeah, I've been, I've well, got some thoughts about it. Well, it was, all, it was all orchestrated to get people to take eject an injection, which is a biochemical weapon. I've got the data, it's got SV40 in, it's cancer causing. So you've now got the future Queen of England who had it, she's got cancer. Mark seems to know an awful lot about the medical condition of the princess of our country who has recently been diagnosed with cancer, but the, the precise cause and type of cancer that she has has not been widely reported. So I can't tell you a damn thing about it. And Neither could Mark Steele, if he was honest with himself for the slightest moment, which of course it isn't. It is Mark's defining characteristic, that utter lack of introspection, that lack of self-knowledge. He, he fails to perceive how utterly ridiculous he is. But that fact is not lost on these two police officers, who, having done their business of setting a, an appointment to meet with Mark, are rather keen to exit. But Mark has other plans. He has something that he wants to tell these police officers, whether they want to hear it or not. Anybody who's had it, it's got a nano particulate, it's wrapped in a shell, and it breaks open, and then you get the uh, turbo cancer, it'll kill you. Anybody that's had it, if they don't get treated for it, and get it removed, it'll kill them. And I plan to kill 50 odd million people in the UK. I've got the intelligence documents. It's a testament to these police officers' patience, or perhaps their utter boredom, having been on the receipt of uh, now seven minutes of Mark Steele's utter drivel, that they didn't ask him why he, a private citizen with no particular security clearance, might be in possession of top secret government documents alleging that uh, there is a, a secret plan to massacre 50 million citizens of the United Kingdom. A strange thing for Mark Steele to possess, given that, as we have previously and painfully established, is a former welder, ex-con and fence installer who has never worked in any kind of military defence capacity and therefore would have no need or business to have access to any kind of military or technical plans whatsoever. Could it be, they must be wondering, are all of these claims, is everything that uh, Mark Steele has been said, saying to them for these past few minutes, is it all some kind of bizarre Walter Mitty style, Baron von Munchausen style tall tale in which Mark Steele has established himself as the hero of, of, of some kind of bizarre conspiracy plot which exists only in his own imagination? The only thing that doesn't seem to exist in Mark Steele's imagination are the threats which emanate from him uh, and uh, unfortunately that's the bit we're bothered about. My MP, I told you all about it early on because right? what happened I was I worked in the defence industry in 2017, well in 2018 the government tried to gag us 
because it installed 5G in the streetlights around Gator. It's a to it was a target acquisition weapon system, Chinese. Try to gag it, said I was a conspiracy theorist and I was frightening people by telling them that the government were going to kill them. Frightening somebody by telling you that the government is trying to kill you, well, that's kind of the definition of being a conspiracy theorist. And, and it's plainly obvious to everybody but Mark. I'll Thank give you, you a ring, all right, and all right. let's try and sort this out. Brilliant. See you later. Thank you very much. OK, cheers. I'd like to say it's been a wild ride, but it's more confusing, perplexing, a disturbing look into the increasingly confused world of an embittered old man who is growing even further out of touch with the people that he is purportedly representing. He believes himself to be a truth teller and a saviour figure, but it's quite clear from just watching this conversation that Mark Steele has become utterly dissociated from reality. Even though his words make a kind of grammatical sense, anyone can tell there's absolutely nothing to it. And I do wonder what these police officers will make of Mark when they finally get him into an interview room, because if I were Mark's lawyer, I'd be pleading insanity. I'd be saying, yes, he did make these bizarre claims on Twitter. He made threatening remarks to all manner of people via his now shut down Twitter channel. But my client is insane and therefore cannot be held responsible for his own actions. And yes, <laughs> before I go, the channel that Mark Steele used to issue these threats on, victims of the nano meta antenna, well, that channel is no more. That's a channel that used to have a few thousand subscribers. So not a thing that Mark Steele would throw away casually, which makes me think that maybe Mark Steele is more than slightly aware of what he's done. He's sufficiently aware of his own crimes to show the need to cover up the evidence. And the way he's done so is by deleting the channel, but perhaps without having thought this fully through because just about everybody who he's issued threats to has kept screenshots, videos, and other evidence of the kinds of things that Mark still used to post. So deleting that channel, well, I don't think it's done him any good, but it's done us some good because it means Mark Steele, his voice is even further diminished. And that is the purpose of this channel. The whole point of Mind of Steel is to cast an eye over the awful things that Mark Steele does and says and to try and get him deplatformed. And when he deplatforms himself, I think we can chalk that up as a victory. So until next week, when uh, I will have some more wacky wonders from Mr. Mark Steele or equally wacky wonders from Miss Sabrina Wallace. Who knows? It could be something even weirder than the two of them put together. Imagine the fusion of the two in some kind of futuristic fusion machine that produces the Ultra Nutter. Well, that may be a fiction that exists only between my ears, but uh, you'll have to wait a week to find out whether that be the truth or that be falsehood.